imagine having a daughter who seems perfectly normal in every way, and suddenly she starts having violent, unexplained seizures? One family is going through this ordeal right now, and home reporter Andy Naden has met up with them. Hi, Andy. Hi, Gary. Good morning. Hi, Sarah. Hi there. This is quite a story for you, wasn't it? This is an amazing story of medical miracles, tremendous personal courage, and even childhood advocacy. We've been following the family of Joe and Cindy Rosales as their young daughter, Jessica, confronts a major and catastrophic illness that suddenly attacked her this summer. Prior to this year, Jessica was a happy and healthy 12-year-old girl who was competitive in sports and who excelled in school. And one day, without warning, Jessica's left side of her body started convulsing. And she was diagnosed with pediatric epilepsy. The problem was that the neurosurgeons felt that this form of epilepsy was incurable. It's extremely rare. And she would atrophy she would eventually become retarded and she could die from this disease. Mm -hmm. Now, Jessica's a fighter and so is her mother and they weren't gonna take no for an answer. So they set out to find the cure to treat Jessica and the doctors who could help her. So for the next three weeks, we're gonna follow the long and emotional medical journey as Jessica travels from San Antonio, Texas to the Johns Hopkins Children's Center in Baltimore, Maryland as she and her family seek a miracle cure. Most of us, the first thing we notice about Jessica Rosales is the nonstop shaking and twitching. But until last July, that wasn't the case. It was then that the bright, vivacious 12-year-old's life suddenly changed forever. Jessica had a seizure that looked almost like she was playing. Uh, you know, almost like she had just learned how to do a new trick with her face. It was that benign looking. It was anything but benign. A few months later, without warning, Jessica suffered a grand mal seizure. As her mother and father watched helplessly and in horror, the daughter's body erupted in violent convulsions. I thought my child was dying. I mean, she sound, it was so ugly and it was so scary and frightening. It hurts as a parent because it hurts me seeing my little girl the way she was. Seeing her, the, how healthy she was at the beginning, you know, for her first 11 years of life. My seizures include my mouth and my eye twitching and my hand and my leg jerking and my mouth feels kind of funny and I can't feel my arm or my leg. Tests turned up a general diagnosis of pediatric epilepsy and medication did not completely alleviate the symptoms. It was then that Cindy, despite being told that there was no hope for Jessica, became determined to cure her daughter's condition. This thing attacked the wrong kid. It messed with the wrong child. It messed with my child. And it just picked the wrong one to mess with. And we're going to be the ones to beat it. When Jessica's mother was informed that her child had pediatric epilepsy, she immediately researched everything she could at a medical center library. She quickly discovered that most of the articles were written by doctors here at the Johns Hopkins Children's Center in Baltimore, Maryland. The Rosaleses decided to bring Jessica to Johns Hopkins for treatment, and shortly after their arrival, a diagnosis was made. Jessica has Rasmussen syndrome. Rasmussen's syndrome, or Rasmussen's encephalitis, is a very rare kind of epilepsy, which looks like it starts at one point in the brain and eats its way out, just like a Pac-Man eats its way out. And it involves more and more of the brain. The Rosaleses were told that their daughter's condition causes untreatable seizures and in later stages, paralysis and mental retardation. The seizures are frequent and debilitating. They attack fiercely and suddenly, as we discovered during our interview with Jessica. Immediately after learning of their daughter's life-threatening illness, the Rosaleses were hit by a second bombshell. There is only one known cure for Rasmussen syndrome, and the treatment is extremely drastic. It's cured by taking out half of the brain. This makes no sense at all, to cure a virus by removing half of the brain. It's the only thing that works. This was a child who was so healthy, perfectly healthy, never even, I always brag, never even had a cavity. And all of a sudden now they're telling me they need to take out half of her brain in order to save her life. It just sounded like this just can't be true. You know, this is, it just, it can't be true. 
But after watching Jessica deteriorate, the Rosaleses made the agonizing decision to go ahead with the surgery. Now, all Cindy and Joe can do is put their trust into the doctors who will treat their little girl and put their faith into God, who they believe will watch over her. Just gotta have faith, and hopefully everything turns out all right. Uh, it was so incredibly touching and what courage her parents have but of course the first thing that goes through your mind is what effect is it going to have on her having half of her brain removed well initially she will lose the movement on the opposite side of the body your right brain controls your left side and your left brain controls your right so in Jessica's case she will not be able to move anything on her left side of her body but eventually wait, 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 wait. I thought you said she was having the seizures on the left side. That's correct. Okay. So now that they remove the right brain, oh, I see. she okay. will initially be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. She will eventually get her leg back, full movement, mm -hmm. and her arm, mm -hmm. and her hand. But the only thing that she will lose forever are the fine motor skills in her fingers. She won't play classical guitar, right. but she can do anything she wants. What other functions does yeah. the right brain have? Well, essentially, they say the right brain is the is creative, creative part yeah. and the left brain, but there's a lot of redundancy in the brain. For example, our memory is in our frontal lobe. So if they remove half the brain, we still have our memory. So there's a recuperative process that goes on that some of the doctors are even amazed by. Wow. So in other words, in a, in, a, in, 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 a, in a perfect world, she has the surgery, and she'll be able to do all the things she would normally have been able to do, except for the little motor skills you're talking about? She'll be able to achieve all of her dreams and her Jeez. family's wishes. Yes. She'll go to college. We followed some other children, and they're even dancing and creative and doing all the things that they want. Now, Andy, is this something that only uh, affects children? Amazingly, it only affects children. That's why the pediatric hospitals have become expert in this. And also, interesting and disquieting is that it generally affects little girls. Wow. Okay. That's something. One final thing before we have to say goodbye, and that is, what happens to the other half of the brain, the cavity that's left? You know, I asked if they fill that up with some type of device or mm -hmm. some type of... Uh, or if it's necessary. But they say that it actually fills up itself with spinal fluid. Oh. The body has tremendous recuperative powers. And especially and at that age. Absolutely. Yeah. The younger, story. the better. Well, next week, Andy's going to be back to continue mm. this amazing story as Jessica enters the operating room. Thank you so Thanks, much. Andy. We'll see Thanks. you next week. Thanks.